Hey scientists, this is lesson five of Earth's Changing Climate. This is a unit for sixth grade scientists, and the lesson for today is called Learning More About Past Climate Changes. So a couple of things you'll need for our lesson today. You'll need something to jot your ideas down, maybe some paper or notebook. It's helpful to have someone to talk to, so text or DM a friend or have a family member come join you for this lesson. And then also we'll be using two things from Amplify Science. There's an article called Past Climate Changes on Earth, and also we'll be using the Earth Changing Climate Sim. So where we left off at the end of lesson four is that we had come to an understanding that Earth's current climate is changing, but there have been times in Earth's history when the climate has also changed. And so at the end of lesson four, I asked you to prepare for this lesson by reading an article called Past, Past Climate Changes on Earth. And so we'll be talking a little bit about that. But before we jump too far into that, I just want to talk about the investigation question that we have for today. This is what we're trying to figure out. And by the end of this lesson, We'll hopefully have some new key concepts we can add to our collection. So the investigation question is, how do carbon dioxide and methane affect energy entering and exiting Earth's system? So in the last lesson, we saw that the amount of energy that comes into the system can affect the global average temperature, and it can affect how the ice might melt or it might grow on Earth's surface. But specifically, what does methane do? to change the amount of energy coming in or coming out of the system, and specifically what does carbon dioxide do to the same effect. And so that's what we're trying to figure out. And so if we look at the past, which is what scientists often do, is they look to see when has this happened before, what data did we collect then, and we talked at the end of lesson four about how scientists use ice cores and tree cores and coral, all different kinds of things that we can discover what the atmosphere was like in the past. So we know that it has changed and that the temperature has changed before too. So in this article, which if you need to get another copy of it or if you haven't read it yet, I would encourage you to do that before we start this lesson. So you can get a copy of the article from the Lesson 4 packet, which you can go to Seattle Schools Science Department. Their website is www.seattleschools.org slash academic slash curriculum slash science and then just scroll down to get to middle school and then download the lesson four packet for earth's changing climate unit or you can go on to your amplify science account super simple just go to the menu and instead of instead of selecting the sim select the library and then choose the article called past climate changes on earth from the earth's changing climate unit Okay, so let's read the first couple paragraphs of this article together. I put them on our slideshow just so that we can take a look at them, and I want to highlight and draw your attention to a couple of words. So the article starts off like this. Evidence shows that Earth is getting warmer. The global climate is changing right now. Did you know that Earth's climate has also changed in the past? During some periods in Earth's 4.6 billion year history, Earth has been much warmer than it is now. And during other periods, Earth has been much cooler. In every case, climate changes on Earth have to do with the amount of energy that enters Earth's system compared to the amount of energy that exits. So this is what we were exploring in lesson four. And if you look at the picture on the left side of the screen, you can see that when more energy enters than exits, that the temperature is definitely going to increase. But if less energy enters than exits, then the temperature will likely drop. So what we'd like to maintain is this equilibrium. That's where the same amount of energy comes in as goes out, because then the ice won't change dramatically, global temperatures won't rise dramatically, and all of those things have effect on the weather on our planet and animals and different climates and ecosystems. So let's look at the next paragraph. So this says, energy is always entering the Earth's system as light from the sun. This energy is absorbed by Earth's surface and warms the air near the surface. At the same time, energy is always exiting Earth's system, passing through the atmosphere and going out into space. When the energy entering and exiting are in balance, global average temperatures will stay the same. And then the next paragraph says, 
Average temperature keeps its stability as long as the amount of energy entering the system is equal to the amount of energy exiting the system. If either one changes, whether it's the energy entering or the energy exiting, the temperature changes too. In the past, when more energy entered than exited, the climate warmed. When less energy entered than exited, the climate cooled. Scientists study past climate changes to find out what might happen as Earth's climate changes, both now and in the future. So in our last lesson, in lesson four, we also took a look at the sim. And when we were looking at the sim, we discovered that you can have energy coming into the system. Um, there's an arrow, an energy arrow that's showing energy coming into the system. You can also have energy exiting the system. And so what we just read in the article is explaining that when these things change, that the global average temperature can change, and when they stay the same, then you can have equilibrium. Things will be equal. Okay, all right, so it's time for a quiz. Are you ready? I have two multiple choice questions, which are totally gonna ace. So the first one says, if more energy enters than exits the Earth's system, energy absorbed by the surface would, okay, Turn to your friend, tell them what you think. If you said increase, then give yourself a pat on the back because you're absolutely right. When more energy comes in, energy absorbed by the surface is going to increase. Okay, so the next multiple choice question, you might see where this is headed, says if more energy exits than enters the Earth's system, energy absorbed by the surface would. And how would you answer that question? And if you're thinking what I'm thinking, which is that if less energy gets absorbed, then the, the temperature is going down and all of those things are happening, then, then you are going to agree that the correct answer is decrease. So if more energy is exiting the Earth's system, then definitely there's not as much for the Earth to absorb, which is going to make the temperature go down. Okay, so we have figured out our first key concept for today's lesson, and there's a few more to go. This is actually three really short key concepts. So let's see, how would you fill in the blank? So a change to either the amount of energy blank or blank, so entering or exiting the Earth's system, affects how much energy is absorbed by the surface. And you'll remember that the word absorbed just means to take something in. When you wipe up some water with a piece of fabric or a paper towel, the water gets absorbed by that fabric. And the same thing happens with energy to Earth's surface. Energy gets absorbed by Earth's surface. So if more energy enters than exits, then temperatures would increase. And if less energy enters than exits, temperature decreases. So these key concepts are things that we kind of figured out a little bit in lesson four and then a little bit right now in our discussion. So let's get back to our investigation question. What we're trying to figure out is how do carbon dioxide and methane affect that? Affect how much energy is coming in, how much energy gets absorbed by Earth's surface. And so we're gonna do a couple of things. One, we'll read these two parts of the article that we just started reading. The first part talks about a, a time period in Earth's past called the Eocene. Now you might have heard of the Jurassic or Triassic period because sometimes we use those words when we're talking about dinosaurs, but the Eocene is a different period in Earth's past. And then there's a different, even a different period from that, which is called the Cryogenian period. And during both of these periods of time, Earth was very different than it is now. In fact, in the Eocene period, the Arctic was so warm that it was comfortable enough for organisms that need warm conditions to live, like reptiles and things like that. You would never see those in the Arctic now. Even during the winter when there's no sun, the Arctic was still warm because the global average temperature was so much higher than it is now. So let's read a little bit of the article to understand more about this weird time on Earth's past. So I'm going to pull that open. And if you have access to the article right now, then go ahead and open that and read along with me. I was a little far down in my reading, so let's get back to the beginning. Okay, so we read through the first couple of paragraphs together, and we're starting here with this really cool picture of like a swamp. It sort of looks like Florida, and you can see these... Um, 
really unusual creatures? Are there are they mammals? What what's going on there? I have so many questions about this. Okay. The caption says during the Eocene period, even the Arctic was warm enough to be a comfortable home for organisms that need warm conditions. Okay. So about 56 million years ago, so this is quite a long time ago, but this was after the dinosaurs, Earth's temperature rose suddenly. Earth got so warm that water in places that were normally very cold or even frozen, such as places near the Arctic Circle, became warm. During the Eocene period, landscapes near the poles looked like swamps in Florida do today. Earth had no ice caps, and the water in the Arctic Ocean was warm enough for a pleasant swim. I can't imagine swimming in the Arctic Ocean. That sounds exciting. In fact, scientists have found fossils showing that alligators, which are warm water organisms, lived in the Arctic during the Eocene period. The global average temperature was about 16 degrees Celsius warmer than it is today. Okay, but why is this happening? So the next part of the, par of the article says... Possible causes of warming in the early Eocene. Scientists are still working to figure out what might have triggered extreme warming in the early Eocene period. Whatever caused the change, the increased temperature tells us that more energy was absorbed by Earth's surface during that time. The balance of energy entering and exiting the Earth's system changed in such a way that more energy entered the system than exited. What would have changed the balance? One theory is that the amount of carbon dioxide gas in the atmosphere increased, perhaps because many volcanoes erupted in a short period of time or a huge asteroid hit the Earth. Whoa, that's huge. Okay, all right. So if carbon dioxide increased, the amount of energy coming into the system from the sun wouldn't have changed because incoming sunlight passes right through carbon dioxide. However, Carbon dioxide in the atmosphere stops some outgoing energy from leaving the Earth system. Okay, that's important. And so if you haven't already highlighted that sentence, I think it's a good idea to do that. Because of this, an increase in carbon di dioxide would mean less energy exiting the system and higher global temperatures. Gases that affect the Earth system in this way, such as carbon, such as carbon dioxide, are called greenhouse gases. Okay, so here is a picture that shows energy coming into the Earth system and exiting Earth system. And the caption says, when more energy enters the Earth system than leaves it, Earth gets warmer. As the climate warmed in the Eocene period, ocean water warmed as well. So back to what we've just been learning, we're not exactly sure why it started warming. It could have been because of a ton of volcanoes erupting or because an asteroid hit Earth. But as it began to warm, the ocean warmed as well, and that had an effect on something else. So normally water at the bottom of the ocean is very cold, close to freezing temperature. However, in the early Eocene, even the deepest water became warm. This change in temperature released methane gas that had been trapped on the ocean floor. The methane gas bubbled up to the surface and entered the atmosphere. Like carbon dioxide, methane stops some outgoing energy from leaving Earth's system. Okay, so I, again, I'm going to highlight that. And I have some questions. So I'll tell you right now that during Lesson 6, we are going to try to figure out why carbon dioxide and methane affect energy exiting Earth's system. But for now, let's keep reading the article. The increase in methane in the atmosphere made the climate even warmer. According to this theory, the combination of increased carbon dioxide and methane in the atmosphere made Earth a very warm place in the Eocene. So here's a picture you can see of some gas bubbles, and this shows something happening at the bottom of the ocean. So warming oceans during the Eocene period released methane gas that had been trapped under the bottom of the ocean. This photo shows methane bubbling up from the ocean floor, and it comes from the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. So you can see that there are some bubbles of methane gas that are being released. And this happens on our planet even now when ocean temperatures get warm or if this, this structure that's containing the methane gas gets disrupted. Okay, so the next part we're going to read in a moment, but let's go back to um, some of the things that we learned from the article. So one thing that we learned is that some of the changes that happened on our planet during the Eocene might have 
caused it to get warmer, including volcanoes erupting, an asteroid hitting, and warming oceans. So what we're going to do now is we're going to try to model that in the sim. If we have more CO2 in the atmosphere because of volcanoes or because of an asteroid, and if we have more methane in the atmosphere because of warming oceans, then how is that going to affect the global average temperature and the amount of ice on our planet? That's what we're trying to figure out. So in a moment, I'm going to have you go to the sim, and you can pause this video and go explore it, or you can hang out with me and watch it as I explore it too. But we're going to model what happened in the Eocene by making as many changes to the sim as we can and try to get the temperature up to what it was in the early Eocene, which is an average of about 25 degrees Celsius, which is so warm. And remember, what were the things that caused this to happen in the Eocene? An increase of carbon dioxide and methane gas, and try to adjust those so if we can use the same model. Okay, so how do you get onto the sim? The best way to get there is to go to your Amplify account, which you can access by going to seattleschools.org. And once you open that up, you'll see kind of down on the middle right side of the screen, there's some quick links. And if you just click there on Clever, then it will just have you log in with your Active Directory and you can get on the same way you would at school using your username and password. If you're not a sixth grader at Seattle Schools and you don't have access to the sim, then I'll show you on this video so you'll be able to watch it. Okay, once you get there, go to the global navigation menu and scroll down until you get to Earth's changing climate sim. Okay, so let's explore it um, together for just a second and then go explore it on your own. Okay, so I'm going to move my picture just down here. And we're looking at a couple of things. We know that the amount of sunlight, the amount of carbon dioxide, and the amount of methane all affect how much energy enters or exits Earth's system. We saw that in the last lesson. According to this article, it's only carbon dioxide and methane that we think we're changing during the Eocene because of more volcanoes, asteroids hitting Earth, or methane being released from the bottom of the ocean floor. And so we're not going to adjust the sunlight because we're trying to model what would have happened during the Eocene. So the data that you're looking for is what's happening to the global average temperature, which you can see there, what's happening to the balance between energy entering versus exiting, and what's happening to our ice. We're trying to figure out why on why the ice on our planet is melting right now. So let's see if we can figure out that from the sim as well. Okay, so if you have access to the sim, go explore it. And if you don't, just stay here with me. Okay, so let's get started by hitting play. And then I know that when um, the increase of carbon dioxide started happening, I'm gonna go ahead and increase that up to just 500 parts per million. That happened because of maybe an asteroid or more volcanoes erupting. I see right away that some of the ice is starting to go away and the Earth's surface is really glowing. And I was able to get the temperature up to about 20 degrees. But what we know happened next was that as the ocean started to warm, that methane gas was released in the, from the bottom of the ocean. So let's increase methane to 500 parts per million as well. Whoa, this is so hot. All the ice is gone, and that's similar to what was happening in the Eocene. We read in the article that there were no ice caps, the Arctic Ocean was warm enough for a pleasant swim, and look at how much the surface of the Earth in the sim is glowing yellow. That shows how much energy is absorbed. So we can see if we look up here, I'm going to pause so that we can take a look at that, and we can see that more energy has entered the system than has been able to exit the system. If I look at the graph here, I can see that the temperature has increased a lot and the amount of energy that's absorbed has also increased. And just like we saw from the sim, the surface ice has melted to 0%. There's just no surface ice left. So we can see that in both of these, what we did was we increased first the carbon dioxide and then the methane gas. And so we were able to reach temperatures similar to what we found in the early Eocene on our planet. So we know that this has happened before and can likely um, happen with the same conditions again. So let's see what happens when Earth's system increases the carbon dioxide and methane. So one thing that we can see is that when more energy enters the Earth system than leaves it, Earth gets warmer. So that's just kind of a final 
capstone idea that we have figured out during exploring the sim and reading this article. So let's go on to the next part of the article. And this one is about something called the Cryogenian period. So during the Cryogenian period, Earth was a cold, icy wasteland that scientists now call Snowball Earth. And if you look at this artist's rendition, because this is not a photograph, this is just what an artist is showing, you can see that the Earth is just covered with a layer of ice. That seems like that would be a disaster. So what caused this to happen? And how could we model that in the sim? So let's take a look at the article. Then we can read a little bit to find out. And here we go. Okay, so Snowball Earth, the Cryogenian period. About 800 million years ago, Earth got much colder. Over time, ice covered most of the Earth's surface, maybe even all of it. This was the Cryogenian period. You may have heard of ice ages in Earth's past, but the Cryogenian period was much colder than any ordinary ice age. During this period, the average global temperature may have fallen as low as negative 20 degrees Celsius. Whoa. Even the equator, which today is warm and tropical, experienced freezing temperatures back then. Nothing lived on land at that time, and all the life was in the ocean in liquid water beneath the frozen surface. So that's how they were able to stay warm enough. The layer of ice protected them. The only living things on Earth at that time were simple sponges, worms, and even microscopic creatures such as bacteria and algae. During the Cryogenian period, Earth's surface was an icy wasteland that scientists have nicknamed Snowball Earth. There's the picture again. So let's see if we can learn more about what would have caused this. Since scientists began finding evidence of Earth's deep freeze, they have been debating what would have caused it. Scientists don't agree about the causes, but there's one thing that they do agree on. Whatever caused Snowball Earth during the Cryogenian period, less energy must have entered Earth's system than was able to exit. This could have been because the amount of energy entering decreased or the amount of energy exiting increased, or both. So this Im image just shows more energy exiting Earth's system than coming in. When less energy enters the Earth's system than leaves it, Earth gets cooler. Scientists have made models to help them understand what might have caused a snowball Earth event. Earth sometimes passes through huge clouds of dust floating in space, and according to one theory, one of those dust clouds entered Earth's system about 800 million years ago. The dust blocks some of the incoming sunlight from reaching Earth's system without changing the amount of energy exiting the system. When less energy entered the system than exited, Earth's temperature cooled. Once the cooling began, more ice formed, and unlike land and liquid water, ice reflects lots of sunlight instead of absorbing it, sending light and its energy back into space. When ice began building up during the Cryogenian period, the sunlight it reflected caused more energy to leave Earth's system and therefore make temperatures even colder. Cold temperatures lead to more ice, which led to even colder temperatures, which led to even more ice, and so on. Once ice covered the entire surface of the planet, a snowball Earth had formed. So let's try to understand this. I have a picture here to, to help us explore this. This is showing something called the albedo effect. And that's a science word that just means how much energy is reflected or absorbed by Earth's system. So unlike land and liquid water, ice reflects lots of sunlight instead of absorbing it, sending light and its energy back into space. So if you look here, you can see that when um, a sea ice reflects about 80% of incoming sunlight, and the dark, so the white sea ice and the dark blue ocean, they affect a different amount of energy getting absorbed. So absorbed solar radiation heats up the ocean, but reflected radiation goes back out into space and exits our system. So light is more likely to reflect off an ice surface. So how might temperature change if reflection increases? So if more reflection happens, less energy is able to stay in our system and the temperature is going to cool down significantly, which just like the article said, increases the amount of ice and then increases the whole circle continues. Okay, so let's see if we can model this in the sim. But there's one thing that I do need to tell you is that the sim can't get quite as cold as Earth during the cryogenian period. But let's try all the things we can um, we can do to get the temperature to decrease. Okay, let me open the sim and let's explore this together. Or if you want to, you can go off and explore by your own. 
um, by yourself and then come back and join us. Okay, let's reset that. Move my picture. So according to the article, we can actually affect the amount of sunlight it was that was able to enter Earth's system because there is a theory that sunlight might have been disrupted by this dust cloud in space. So I'm going to hit play. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to increase sunlight to low, not to none. The sun didn't turn off, just that we had less energy coming in. And, um, and I can see right away that some of the ice began to grow when there's less sunlight. And so that would start the cycle, right? There's more white ice, which reflects the, the light back to space. And there's, there's less dark land and dark blue ocean that's able to absorb the light. And so we can see that the temperature is decreasing. Now I know a couple more tricks in the sim. One thing that we know is that if we decrease the carbon dioxide and methane, that that can actually speed up the amount of energy um, that is able to exit Earth's system, according to what we read. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that, even though that's not necessarily what was happening, just because I want to see if I can get the average temperature to go down. And one other thing that we learned in our exploration of the sim in lesson four is that if you increase sulfur dioxide in the atmosphere, you can actually also affect how much energy is able to enter or exit. And so if I look at this, I can see that, oh, this is probably as cold as I can possibly make the sim. But look how cold it is. Look how much ice we have on the surface. And look at the average temperature is dropping. It's, oh, it's so cold. It's dropping down pretty quick. I don't know if we can go past the ice here. It looks like it's hovering between three and four degrees. And the ice is kind of increasing and decreasing as we go, as things are fluctuating in the Earth system. Okay, cool. So let's go back here and let's take a look at sort of a final thing that we discovered as we were looking at the sim and adjusting it according to what we read about the cryogenian period. And one thing that we know now is that when less energy enters the Earth's system than leaves it, Earth gets cooler. Ice increases, temperature drops. And so it's time now for us to organize our ideas into a new key concept. So let's do the fill in the blank thing again. And so if there is a blank in the amount of carbon dioxide or methane, the amount of energy leaving the Earth system blanks. So blanks enters the nexus. Okay, so let's, we can use this exact same fill in the blank to actually write two key concepts. So this first one we can say is, if there's an increase in the amount of carbon dioxide or methane, the amount of energy leaving the Earth system increases, so more energy enters than exits. Ignore this comma, it's not supposed to be there. Okay, but we can also switch this around and we can say if there is a decrease in the amount of carbon dioxide or methane, the amount of energy leaving the Earth system also decreases, so less enter less energy enters than exits. Okay, so this is an exciting moment. We figured out so many things about our planet, about global climate change, about why the ice is melting or growing. And so in our next lesson, we're going to look very carefully at how the energy interacts with gases in the atmosphere that might change whether it can enter or exit Earth's system. So that's what we'll be doing in lesson six. I'll see you then.